Hey everyone, Derek here from Wayscript. In this one, I want to show you a brief demonstration on how we can pass URL parameters directly into our Java code. Let's get started. Wayscript makes this easy to do in just a few steps. What we're doing is setting up a URL which takes in query parameters. We'll pass these query parameter values to Java logic and then we'll get some result back. We can return that result as HTML, JSON, and a couple others. In Wayscript, we can set up an API in just a few seconds. What we need to set up an API is an endpoint that we can send the request to, so we'll use an HTTP trigger to do that, and that will give us this URL. Whenever the user goes to this URL, we want some type of response. So we need an HTTP module inside of our tree. This is where we can return the response content back to the user. Now we just need to create that response content. In this example, we're taking in a query parameter, so we need to go back to the HTTP trigger. We can click here to input the query parameter, and we'll just say something like value, and then we can put in a default. So what this does is create a Wayscript variable that we can use later on in our tree. So any module that we put into our tree after this trigger now has access to this value. So when a user goes to this URL and passes a value query parameter set equal to some number, that value becomes available to us in our workflow. If we're working with numbers, we may want to cast a data type onto our value. We see that the default is a string, so let's change that. We'll use the cast module. We can input value as the variable, and then let's change it from a string to a float. Now we see that we have a new variable called casted variable that is equal to 1.0. Connecting to a programming language is just as easy. What we can do is click off of that and we see that we have a whole section called code with different programming languages available. Since we're using Java, let's pull that, enter our tree. Now that we have Java in our tree, we can click edit code to the left and we get a full Java editor that we can put in our own custom code into. Our first step is to access the variable that we created on Wayscript. So this is the Wayscript variable that we need to turn into a Java variable. We'll do this by saying something like double will be the data type, and then since we're storing this as an object, we need to cast on the type. We'll say wayscript.variables.get, and then we'll pass in the name of that variable. For us, that's called a casted variable. For this example, I just want to show you how easy it is to connect Java. So we'll just do a simple operation. Then we'll change this final line and we'll say something like result will be equal to result value. We'll add our semicolon and then we'll hit run code. We get nothing back in our log, but you see that we've now put a new variable called result down here in our variables panel of 2.0. And that's all we needed to do to connect Java programming logic to a URL query parameter. Now, let's return that value back with our HTTP response. If we were creating an API, we may want to select JSON and do more in this Java step and create the actual JSON there. For this example, we'll keep it simple and I'll just return HTML. Then we'll pass in result by clicking on it and dragging it to our response content. Once we've defined our response content, let's go and activate our HTTP trigger. Once it's activated, we can go to this URL. Our default value was one, and that's why we're getting back two. If we were to change this query parameter to value equals 10, we should get back a different value here in our HTML, which we do. And that's it for this, and that's it for this quick tutorial. I hope it shows you just how powerful Wayscript is. We can easily integrate programming logic to many other modules and triggers on the Wayscript platform. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please let us know and we'll help you out. Until next time.